Watch this. It was about this time last week when events started getting postponed. We were told to limit our exposure to each other and asked to stay away from large gatherings. And so we did, and we have. And those in the service industry have certainly felt the pinch. The temporary shutdowns and outright closures started popping up. A lot more in recent days, so many we can't really keep up with all of them. It's where community crises like these are first felt, especially at restaurants where we tend to gather for a good meal among friends and family. We stopped keeping track, as I mentioned, of how many restaurants have shut their doors or gone strictly to takeout or delivery. And to do that, they've had to cut back on staff, further adding to the instability and uncertainty we are seeing around here because of the coronavirus. And it's not just here in the Treasure Valley. Steve Topple is the executive chef and owner of three restaurants in the McCall Donnelly area. He's had to shut down two of them. Ragaza de Buffalo in Donnelly and Jasmine and Ginger in McCall, sending home 40 of his 50 employees. Steve knows he's not alone in having to do this, but that doesn't make it any easier. Just to give people an idea, what's it like for somebody who owns a restaurant in a time when people are told to stay at home? Yeah, it, it's scary. I mean, this is like, my, I've been in the restaurant industry for now for gosh, what, 25 years. Um, and so it, I've never seen anything like this as, as bad as this. You know, it's uh, after 9 11, it was definitely very scary for sure. But it's, uh, you know, right, right now it's just like, it, it's, it's hard. I don't know how I'm going to make ends meet. You know, it's like, as a business owner, I, 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 you know, I barely have enough money even to pay payroll from the last two weeks. And, you know, my food suppliers and stuff like that, they, they need money. And, um, you know, I just don't have the money to pay them right now because you, restaurants tend to be on a very thin budget anyway we don't have like a, a huge amounts of, of money and number one it's uh, it's definitely safety and sanitation issue right now you know having you know mass groups of people coming into restaurants it's definitely more advisable not to come in and yeah. try and avoid having groups of 10 or more so it's hard when you have a restaurant and that can seat 80 people and that's how many people can sit in my restaurant you started noticing a change you said last week yes correct yeah about um, Tuesday, Wednesday, I noticed reservations started to drop down, uh, which was really scary. Um, you know, it was definitely, uh, um, I, I could see there was a decline, decline in reservations for sure. Like a steep decline. Yes. Yeah. It was like, uh, we, we probably had like 25 reservations a night and then we dropped down to like almost like two or six people a night, uh, which is like massive. You know, we would normally would do about 50 to 50 to 60 covers a night. Um, uh, with walk-in business as well, but there's no walk-in business right now. And, um, you know, it's just uh, um, everybody's staying at home and trying to be safe, which I think is a smart thing. It's a smart thing, but as a business person, it, it hurts, doesn't it? Oh, my gosh. It was like the hardest decision ever, you know. So it was a, I definitely got emotional, you know, thinking about it for sure. It's, uh, you know, because they're, 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 they're basically my family, you know, like all these employees. I have over 50 employees between all the restaurants. And um, it, it's, it's really tough for sure, you know. it's um, It definitely hurts because... You know, they're your family and you want to look after them and how are they going to survive and, you know, it's all, all those issues, you know, for sure. Yeah. And and without having to tell them, like, you don't know how long, right? No, exactly. I mean, like, you know, I'm, I'm anticipating a month right now. Let's, let's just plan for a month and see what happens and um, go from there and, you know, see if this gets better. <laughs> Hopefully it does, you know, with people staying, staying inside and not going out to restaurants and stuff. The restaurants are kind of the first to react to situations like this, aren't they? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, it's a, like I say, it's a tight community and we're all, we're all going to help each other out and we will get through this, you know, and summer's, summer's come in and we have a beautiful location here on the lake and people will hopefully come back and visit us and stuff like that here and we'll get some tourists to come back and you know, that's what we kind of depend upon here in McCall is, is the tourist season for sure, you know, so people are, the people aren't coming here right now. That's the, that's the thing, you know. Well, Steve told me he will continue to cover the cost of health insurance for the 40 he had to let go. He's also sending them home with food that they won't be able to serve at his restaurants. And he's offering them deep discounts on food at the Blue Moose drive through in McCall. It's his other restaurant that is still open, and it happens to be the town's only drive through but even it has seen a downturn in customers. Well, so many local businesses shutting down for the foreseeable future to help stop the spread of the coronavirus. A lot of you have been asking about unemployment options, like Tammy, who posted this question to our 208 Facebook group. Is there a program or assistance available for those who have lost their job when employers close the doors and is without pay due to the coronavirus? Well, for answers, we turn to the Idaho Department of Labor, and they say that if your workplace is temporarily or permanently closed, you can file a claim for unemployment. There are some stipulations, like 
you must be physically and mentally able to work and be available for work. Obviously, there are some other circumstances that could come into play. A lot of those are answered on a case by case basis, like if you quit your job because of concerns over COVID-19 or if you're in isolation but haven't been diagnosed. However, there are some circumstances in which you would not be eligible for unemployment, like if you left your job to take care of your kids who are out of school because of the virus. Why? Well, that seems like a legitimate reason, right? The Department of Labor says if you do not qualify the reason if you the, says you do not qualify, that is, if the reason for leaving is not because of your job. That's the way it always has been when it comes to unemployment benefits. If you think you do qualify, though, you can file online with the Department of Labor's website. And with all of that said, if you are looking for work, there are several grocery store chains out there who are hiring. And they're hoping to help meet the demand. Well, meanwhile, amongst all of this social distancing and unprecedented measures to flatten the curve of the coronavirus, the Idaho legislature has continued to gather in their respective chambers to debate and pass bills, including House Bill 500, the nation's first transgender athlete bill that would keep trans women from playing on women's teams. Joe Paris has more from the State House, where they are still working their way through a pandemic. A lot of questions about when the lawmakers will be able to go home from the 2020 session and the knowledge right now sounds like the session in terms of work will be done tonight or early tomorrow. The formal signy die though may have to be a few days from now, but lawmakers tell me not everyone may have to be here for that. It certainly has been a little unusual. For House Speaker Scott Bedke, business at the State House has been odd at times this week. There is, however, an end in sight. So we'll finish our business today, I predict. The plan for now is to get legislative business done by the end of Wednesday, with a formal signy die penciled in for Friday. Not all legislators would have to stick around, but Bedke says they can't go home. Um, we would have to have uh, at least a quorum, and no, there's no provision in our Constitution uh, or in statute to do anything remotely. Bedke says the process of transmitting bills to the governor takes time. That's part of why they can't end the session. Some legislators, however, don't think signy die by Friday is 100% realistic. I have no idea when we'll be done. Senator Cherie Buckner Webb says she thinks the session should already be over. She understands there's important business to do, but she thinks some legislation simply could have waited. It doesn't mean that they have to go undone forever, but for the time that is now, I firmly believe we should be out of this body. At this juncture, Buckner Webb and other Democrats say things like the transgender athlete bill didn't have to be done right away. It did pass the House on its final vote, and it now heads to the governor. Those kinds of bills don't only impact somebody with a label. It impacts all of us, and it all impacts our humanity. It talks about who we are, what we believe, and who we will be in the future. Top of mind, though, for many here remains concerns over the spread of coronavirus across Idaho. Already three lawmakers have left for the session. Senator Buckner Webb applauds them. They've made a good choice for them, and I'm, I'm kind of wavering every day. I, I would like to believe that we're going to get it done today, and I may have to make that same decision. We're very aware of the situation outside of the building, but in here we have the people's business to finish, and that's what we're going to do, hopefully wrapping up today. While it's impossible to say exactly when the session will end, Governor Little said this morning that he won't do anything to, quote, impede the session from ending. We'll see exactly what that means in the coming day. Reporting from the state capitol in Boise, Joe Paris, Idaho's News Channel 7. The people's business, unless that applies to transgender people. House Bill 500 would be the second transgender bill sent to Governor Little's office in as many days. Both of them, House Bill 509 and House Bill 500, have been deemed by the state's attorney general's office to be highly susceptible to lawsuits and likely unconstitutional, something that didn't seem to matter to either house of Idaho's legislature. It's been an almost free-for-all mentality at grocery stores lately, leaving a lot of empty shelves and concerned customers. Now some stores are making sure their most at-risk shoppers can do so without worry. Drive up service isn't a new concept in the Treasure Valley. Thanks to this 85 year old, we check back in with Dick Sola and his full service gas station in the 208 redial. And check in with us. We want to hear from you about, well, anything. What we've talked about, what you want us to talk about. Send us a text. The number is 208 321 5614. 
Make sure to include your name in the hashtag the 208 because we want to read some of them at the end of the show. Have we gotten past the point of panic buying yet? Probably not. Can we go to the grocery stores now without expecting a stampede? Possibly. Well, hopefully the answer is yes, depending on where you shop. Well, I went into a couple of stores this afternoon, which is typically considered an afternoon rush. Everything seemed pretty normal. Normal amount of people in their shopping, normal amount of people helping those people shop. But there were empty shelves in the paper products aisle. Just a long line of empty shelves still there. Another newsroom employee said she went after work yesterday and while that store was out of things like toilet paper, seemed pretty calm. It was, dare we say, almost normal or at least getting that direction. Stores though are continuing to do more to make sure everyone can get what they need in a civilized manner, including some are instituting senior hours to help our vulnerable population get what they need without having to worry about crowds. So starting tomorrow, the Boise Co-op will open 8 to 9 every day for those 60 years and older. And yes, you do have to show your ID to get in. Albertsons will open 7 to 9 every Tuesday and Thursday for senior citizens and the at-risk community, which includes those with compromised immune systems and pregnant women. At this moment, those are the two only or the only two, I should say, stores that we know of enforcing those kind of hours. We will add more to the list if and when they are announced. Well, what wanted to show you here leaving town, and of course, usually this time of night, it's pretty full along through here, but you can see we have a really good movement of cars that are going out for the freeway at this particular time. The high temperature today, we did not get up to 50 degrees, 48 was the high. Ontario did at 51 degrees, 48 degrees for Nampa, and you see Caldwell for 49 degrees. Twin Falls had the highest 79. Most of the mountains, upper 30s to the lower 40s in most of those areas. Now we had a few showers around uh, southern Idaho. The low is to our south, and as it continues to rotate, it brings up moisture this way even into Montana and starts to work it back. But as that low continues to move eastward, it gets out of our reach. So what's happening here is we look through tomorrow at 6 o'clock, maybe a few mountain showers, but look how this thing clears up. And this is going to continue on into the weekend, too, as we look at these clearing conditions. Latest satellite just shows the showers are to our north. There's a few areas south here of Mountain Home, but right around the Boise area, we're fairly dry at this point. And just to show you the motion of this, you see the showers continue to move north. So we have a few showing up here to the south, 
but it doesn't appear like a lot's going to really come into our area that is for this evening. So basically starting to dry up. So tomorrow's temperatures getting up into at least the mid 50s or so 56 degrees, quite a bit of sunshine. Winds will be about 5 to 15 miles an hour. Your seven day forecast you see 57 for tomorrow with a low of 33. So we get some of that warmth back because the wind chill right now is 42. It's a little chilly out there. As you look at Friday 59, Saturday, Sunday, Monday 60 degrees. There could be some showers into Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Brings the highs down to the mid 50s. Full service, long after full service fell away. We're looking back at this classic Idaho life and checking in with Dick's Chevron. You keep reminding us what a wonderful place we all live in. Thanks to these random acts of kindness submissions. You can send us your feel good stories through text 208. And you can send us your feel good stories through text 208-321-5614. Be sure to include your name. Not touching stuff. It's kind of the course of action in this coronavirus containment concept. We aren't touching doors, each other. We don't even want to go inside places or even get out of our cars. Delivery and drive up service is one way to avoid these things, which made us think about getting gas for your car. There's still one place in the Treasure Valley where you don't have to get out of your car or touch anything to fill her up. We first met Dick Sola of Dick's Chevron four years ago. He's been in business since 1961. That was the same year the Berlin Wall was built when man made a first trip to space. A gallon of gas cost 27 cents. Well, a lot has changed around Boise since then, especially the price of gas. But as we learned in this 208 redial, the more things change, the more they stay the same with Dick Sola and his Chevron gas station. In this day and age of do it yourself, there's still one place where you don't. Need a little gas, right? This is Dick's Chevron in Boise, the only gas station in the Treasure Valley that is full time, full service. Yeah, run her up to 3070 today, ma'am. Meaning you pull in, and 82 year old Dick Sola comes out to pump your petrol. And he will wash your windows, 
and he will even ask you if you need your oil checked. Pamela Sherman has been a regular patron of Dick's for 17 years for almost two decades. Yeah, so he's our favorite. Hey, Mr. Bauman. Some have been filling up for a lot longer. Yeah, you talked me into it. Like Dean Bauman. A little oil. Who's been a steady customer since the early 60s. A little warmer today. Yeah, that cold weather killed you, you know. That was shortly after Dick bought the gas station on the corner of 32nd and State Streets. Yep, yep. In 1961. Oh, man, it was only a two way road out here, you know, a lot of changes. Back then, can't remember all the changes. Full service was the standard. <laughs> But since the 70s, gas stations have been sliding swiftly toward self-service. Oh well. Leaving Dick as a dying breed. Ain't there one on somewhere there? There used to be. When he's not waiting on customers, you can find Dick in the garage. Here, oh well, oh well. he does a bit more than the basics of maintenance. That's what they told you, huh, Clunk? Yep. The tools he uses are about as old as the wall they hang on. Yep. And during downtimes, race cars are his hobby. Everybody's got to have a hobby. Can't work all the time, right? Except Dick does work all the time. Most of the time, yeah. <laughs> He's here by himself seven days a week. Sundays, I only work from 10 to 4. Sure, you may pay a few more cents a gallon for gas, but what you get is... Service. Ha-ha! <laughs> it's a simple business model. No snacks, no sodas. No, I had a Coke machine, but... The dang thing broke down, so they took her out. But I didn't sell that much coke anyway. A computer? It's here somewhere. I mean, it's not in the back room. But most of the paperwork is done on actual paper. <laughs> he came to Idaho as an airman in 1954. Well, you're almost to World War II. No, I ain't that old. And in more than five decades of business, <laughs> he's raised three kids and lost his wife to cancer 25 years ago. It's a look into the way things used to be at Dick Chevron. Well, well. And sometimes. There's nothing falling off, so. Like an old car. Don't look like anyway. You can't find anything wrong with it. Yep, can't win them all. It's just old. Not only that, it, you know, it, things wear out no matter what, you know. Everything wears out. Well, not everything. Got to be doing something, right? You don't mind we eat lunch. Dick is one of a kind. That's for sure. Brian Holmes. Kind of like the old days, you know. Idaho's News Channel 7. Well, Dick told us four years ago he didn't have any plans to update the gas station. It's too expensive and he's too old, he said. Those are his words. And he hasn't updated the station. He doesn't do the heavy work on the cars anymore, but he still checks the oil, still washes the windows, and he still pumps the gas as the only full service gas station left in the Treasure Valley. And today, yeah. when we stopped in at the age of 85, he still has no plans to go anywhere. Still here. Probably be here till it's all a life over, you know, cause I gotta eat. You gotta eat, you gotta work, right? So no plans to step away? No. I, I don't know what I do, I step away, you know, really. You don't want to sit home on the couch. You don't last long that way, you know, watching TV all the time. <laughs> What's wrong with watching TV all the time, Dick? It's cool, right? We'll be right back with more of the 208 right after this.
You keep sending them to us, so we're going to keep sharing them. The silver linings, the random and sometimes intended kindness shown during this unsettling time. Like Lynette, who says she had to wait 45 minutes in the checkout line because of a broken register. But she struck up a conversation with Ashley, who then offered to bag Lynette's groceries. She says, it was nice to visit with a friendly person during a high stress time. What about Rick and Norma, who met a young employee at the Meridian Winco? The Richardsons say she ran across the parking lot just to give them a package of toilet paper she had bought for herself when they couldn't find any in the store. Or this customer who overheard a conversation about an employee being out of toilet paper, later returning with a 12 pack, offering it out of the kindness of his heart. Kindness, it's what's going to help us all get through this. So share those acts of kindness with us. Let's try to make them more contagious. Well, that kindness isn't limited to just people. All week, we've told you about small businesses stepping up to the plate and filling it for those who may be struggling to do that right now. Coming up tomorrow on the 208, Andrade's restaurant in Boise says as long as they have food in their kitchen, they're going to feed those in need no charge. You can hear why the owner says this is especially important to him and how you can help. That's coming up tomorrow on the 208. All right, rounding up to 8 here with a look at some of your comments. This one sent in while all Boiseans are asked to stay home, social distance, etc. Why are they or why is it business as usual still at the airport? Approximately 20 commercial arrivals per day from Seattle, San Francisco, hot spots like that. Why are we leaving this open as a pathway for the virus? Well, I look, we talked to a mayor McLean about this earlier and she can't she didn't close down the airport, but can you imagine what it would take to stop the FAA to get involved and stop those flights coming to and from the Boise airport? And yeah, we could say they should not take those flights, but that's up to the airlines, I'm guessing. So it is still kind of business as usual, but really not. A lot of people are not traveling right now, which is why the airlines are kind of hurting. On the 28, report of the Blue Moose, the only drive up in McCall, not true. The only, only drive through restaurant in McCall is, I probably should clarify that. Yes, Growlers does have a drive through, but the Blue Moose is the only drive through strictly for drive through. How can the Boise Mayor close down the two public golf courses? 
but keep the parks open. Well, I guess because it takes people to work the golf course, rather the park system is kind of wide open at your discretion. One thing the coronavirus has shown us, cabin fever shows that social media distancing may not be a bad thing. Just take a deep breath, Tom. We'll try to get through this together on the 208. We'll see you back here tomorrow.